If you've ever tried to print out your digital art, you may have noticed that what comes out on paper doesn't look quite as good as it does on your monitor. I received plenty of messages over the years from people wondering why their art looked good on their phone or their tablet or their computer and then kind of looked like crap on paper. So if you've ever had this problem with your colors looking uh, washed out or just less vibrant or dark or muddy, by the end of this video, you'll understand why that happens and how to avoid it. And as someone who obsesses about color for a living, who's been published in print a hundred and something times, I think there's a big knowledge gap in the digital art tutorial culture world on YouTube when it comes to the importance of color gamuts. So let's fix that. <laughs> in order to understand what turns your vibrant, saturated colors into this in print, we'll have to start with color gamuts. So what is a color gamut? In short, a gamut is just a range of possible colors. Uh, we can start by looking at the largest possible gamut, which is all the colors that are visible to the human eye. This is also called the visible light spectrum. There are billions of colors in this gamut. And I get that this is a weirdly shaped graph, but it was created in 1931, and I don't believe we've done any better since. We still use it today. Now there's no display technology in the world that can show all of these colors. Most displays today, TVs, monitors, phones, use the RGB gamut. There are a few small differences, but uh, Adobe RGB or sRGB are probably the most well-known. And these gamuts have roughly 16.7 million possible colors, and most digital art apps default to that gamut. And you'll see these gamuts referenced in the specs of the marketing materials of the you know, monitors and things like that, especially on the high end. It's a way to show how accurate those monitors are. So you might see, you know, this monitor does 100% of the sRGB color gamut, which means it does all of them. Or you might see one that says this one does 80% of Adobe RGB. It just means they can show 80% of the colors in that gamut. So what does that have to do with printers? Printers are a totally different game. Printers don't use the RGB color gamut. They use the CMYK color gamut, which is even smaller than RGB. And most CMYK printers can produce about 16,000 possible colors. So that's a long way from 16.7 million. So the short answer of why your colors look like crap in print is because you are using colors that quite literally cannot be printed. And the printer is trying to do its best to find the closest possible matches to the colors that you've chosen. For example, this is a representation of the RGB spectrum at maximum saturation levels and maximum luminosity or, or maximum brightness, you might say. And this is that same set of colors, except it's limited to the CMYK color palette or the print palette. Now I've discussed this on streams a few times over the last couple of months and the same questions keep coming up. So I'm gonna try to address some of those now. I do know that there's at least one of you out there right now going, no, wait a minute. I, I saw this comic and it was using those greens. It's got those saturated greens. The guy had a ring and it glowed and I'm positive, I, yeah, yeah, I'm positive you're wrong. Those greens are in there. Well, there's two reasons why you are seeing what you think you're seeing, and I'll tell you why they're both wrong, <laughs> okay? So, number one, uh, let's take a look at the green, uh, the green ring guy. So, here's an example. You're, you're thinking, wait a minute, th this is it. This is using all those, those really bright green colors, right? Well, let's take a look. Some of the, the brightest colors on this particular image, so like some of these greens. Look where that is in the color picker. It's not up here. It's like halfway across. This is like half saturation, okay? As I kind of pick some of these through here, you'll notice that most of these fall in that same kind of, you know, narrow range of middle tone, mid-saturation colors. But the other thing I want you to notice is it's not really completely pure green. When it starts getting really hot, you'll notice that things start to shift a little bit toward yellow. That, that's one of the kind of tricks I found out. If you're trying to get a really bright, saturated green, if you try to keep it green, you know, like pure green, it's not going to work out. But remember, yellow is a print color. And so if you're shifting those, you know, warmer ends of your, you know, green glowing energy stuff a little bit toward yellow, then you're in a range that the printer can handle. This image we're seeing right now is being viewed in CMYK. So number one, it's not as green as you think it is. Uh, number two, it's not as saturated as you think it is. If you want to make something saturated, surround it by colors that are not. So take this for example. If I want something to look like it's glowing green, check this out. So one, it's surrounded by colors that are significantly darker and not green. Okay, so 
as you add this glow here, again, look at this color. Like this is not a really super saturated green. You just think it is because it's surrounded by colors that are perceptually, you know, less intense. Okay. So, I mean, actually some of these blues are, are technically more saturated, but because this green is so bright and so intense and so much different than everything else you see on the screen, you know, you don't have to completely blow it out with saturation by turning it all the way up. And to show you kind of how powerful that perception is, so we're back at where we started earlier with this particular example. And again, these are all like really saturated, super intense colors, but this is in CMYK. Did you notice that it was in CMYK? It's easy to notice when you compare the two right next to each other. But what CMYK is doing, it's basically shaving the sharp edges literally off of the ends of these gamuts. And so CMYK in itself is in a way a, its own limited palette. And so a lot of times when you do convert a drawing from RGB to CMYK, it sort of homogenizes all the colors a little bit. It's taking those harsh greens and the harsh reds and the harsh blues and toning them down. And so you end up with this nice kind of, you know, creamier version of your color palette. So why would I want to work in RGB if I've got to convert to CMYK anyway? I can't speak for everyone else, but I know for my case, you know, I like using you know, blending modes, you know, for the layers, hard light, multiply, screen, whatever. Not all of those blending modes work in CMYK. Some don't work at all. Some are completely unavailable and some work differently than they do in RGB. Okay. I've grown accustomed to working in RGB and converting. I can only speak for myself again, but there's tons of people that work in both. The other thing to consider is where you're getting your work printed. Uh, some print shops these days actually use printers that use more than four colors. You know, there's like a, is it a hexa something printing or something that's six or eight colors. Uh, and some print shops will will tell you, it's like, well, just send us the files in RGB. We can actually convert those in a way that, you know, for the printer to actually try to duplicate. So it just depends on your print shop. But, you know, comic books, if you're in my industry, they're all printed in CMYK as far as I know. I don't think there are any fancy printing technologies going on unless it's like, you know, for covers of hardbacks or something, maybe. I'm, I'm not an expert on printing technology, to be honest. So if I've overgeneralized, which is very likely, just let me know in the comments and uh, I'll see if I can figure that out. But the reason I think this has been kind of a big gap in, uh, in knowledge in general when it comes to especially new digital artists is so much of the work we create today is for consumption on tablets and computers and phones and those kind of things. And there are lots of artists that never print their art, you know, at all. And so the first time that they ever do, it's like, what happened? <laughs> but so, so definitely keep that in mind, you know, wh what, what kind of devices that your audience is consuming your art on, you know, if, if you're doing a web comic and everybody's looking at it on their fancy iPads with its, whatever DCI P3 color gamut with a jillion colors, you know, some people do like to tune them for viewing on the web, but just keep in mind, if you ever go to do a collection and you want to Kickstarter your print version, you might have to go in and kind of tweak some things if you do that. So again, this video is not meant to answer all the questions about this. I tried to be as broad as I could and still get all the information across. There are a lot of factors at play with print when it comes to paper and the printing technology and all that stuff. So, you know, your experience may vary. If you're interested in learning more about the technical ins and outs of coloring, links to my online courses are available in the description. Uh, this channel is supported by them and my patrons and YouTube members. So thank you to them. You can join my fellow band of coloring nerds in there if you want. Uh, we have a good time in there answering each other's questions, giving feedback, all that good stuff. Thanks for watching. Click all the buttons they want you to click. And I'll uh, see you in the next one. Take care, guys.